Welcome back to the Demon Slayer Gaming Channel. We're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guys series today. We're going to be taking a look at the Great Google Library Hard Mode. For the trash pulls in here, the large bibliolator has a untelevised frontal cone. You'll want to keep him facing away from the party. And he also has a tail drive ability, which is a cone AoE behind him. So if you can, kind of position him so that the rest of the team is on his side. In the next section, there will be multiple cone AoEs along with a few large circular AoEs to avoid. Ripples of Glum is a party-wide damaging ability that would just need to be healed through. All of the small babulas are the ones that cast this. For the Demon of the Tome, you'll want to tank him towards the side of the arena. When he casts Folio, it will indicate a area on the platform that a book is going to slam down on. You'll take proximity damage depending on how close you are to that area. So you can move to opposite sides of the platform to reduce this damage, but the damage should not be significant as long as you are not inside of the area. The second time he casts Folio, he will follow it up with a book on outside of both platforms that will shift in towards the middle. So you'll want to move out of these after being knocked towards them. Frightening Roar is a circular AoE that you just want to move out of. For the third casting of Folio, it will do books across the arena that will slowly move into the arena. So you'll want to position yourself on the side that they are not falling on and then after one set slam shut then move into that area if he's not already dead by then. In the next area, the ink stains have a large cone AoE that you'll want to make sure that you're avoiding, along with the Biblioclast also has a cone AoE. The fire homunculus are caster type units and will constantly be spamming fire on you. The Biblioclast also occasionally casts fire water, which is a circular AoE that would just need to be moved out of. The Bibliophagus occasionally will do a large line AoE that you'll just want to move out of. After these units are dead, you'll step onto the book to be bumped up to the second boss. Liquid Flame has multiple different forms and will have different abilities in each of these forms depending on which one he's currently in. For the first phase, he just has a untelevised frontal cone that you'll want to keep him facing away from the party for. His Biblioside is a unavoidable party-wide AoE that you'll just want to heal through. Sea of Flame puts a AoE under party members two times in a row. So you'll just want to move out of these AoEs. Slosh causes him to tether to a party member and then after a period of time charge at them. This damage is reduced by how far away from the boss you are, so make sure that you're moving away. The 
when he goes into his tornado form, then he will cut off the outside of the arena, and then he'll cast Fur of Fluid. If your symbol is the same as the bosses, you'll want to move close to him as it's going to push you away from him. And if it is the opposite side of the boss, then you'll want to move away as far away from him as possible because it's going to pull you into him. If the boss is not dead by the time he casts Seal of Night and Day, then you'll get Sun and Moon marks, and you'll want to run to the corresponding Sun or Moon sigil on the... In the next area, there's quite a few caster units, so you'll just need to continuously move towards them or allow them to come to you in between their casts. There will be several of the Akano servants from previous dungeons also that function like many of the player characters. So there will be warrior type units that have frontal cone AoEs and then mage and priest type units that have circular AoEs. Panda will occasionally cast a large circular AoE that would just need to be moved out of. And when he gets down to about 50% HP, he'll continuously start casting an AoE that does a vulnerability up debuff. So this is a DPS check just to burn him down before he, you get enough stacks of the vulnerability that it starts to kill everyone. Strix has many abilities that can be completely avoided. When he casts Checkout, it'll summon several AoEs onto the ground, which you'll want to keep note of. You'll use these to dodge different abilities. When he casts Properties of Quakes, you'll want to move into the Windy Circles to get off of the ground to negate the damage that you receive. check out again there will be two different types of circles there will be the purple and the green for on darkness cannot be avoided and you'll just need to heal through this ability for tornadoes you'll want to move into the purple aoe's to receive leaden to avoid being knocked up Properties of Imp, you'll want to move into the green AoE after you have been turned into an Imp to revert yourself back to normal. If you do not revert yourself back from being an Imp, then the Thunder Spell will do major damage. At about 50 to 75% of his HP being reduced, Strix will summon in Behemoth. Behemoth is untargetable and will continuously cast AoEs. You will start summoning in comets into the fight that you'll just do proximity damage so you just need to move away from them to reduce the amount of damage that you take. These comets will focus as a barrier between you and Behemoth to reduce the amount of damage that Meteor does. You'll need to make sure that you're positioning these comets between you and Behemoth or otherwise Meteor will do massive damage. But hopefully with enough DPS, you should be able to avoid Meteor altogether. 
this should be it for the great Google library hard mode. I hope this helps everyone out. If it does, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.